The Nephilim slash NFLM slash Hebrew Enfilim are mysterious beings or people in the Hebrew Bible who are described as being large and strong one. The word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants in most translations of the Hebrew Bible, but left untranslated in others. Some Jewish explanations interpret them as hybrid sons of fallen angels demigods. The main reference to them is in Genesis 6 1-4. That the passage is ambiguous and the identity of the Nephilim is disputed. 1 2 According to the Book of Numbers 1 33 pm, a report from 10 of the 12 spies was given of them inhabiting Canaan at the time of the Israelite conquest of Canaan. A similar or identical biblical Hebrew term read as Nephilim by some scholars or as the word fallen by others appears in the book of Ezekiel 32 7 and is also mentioned in the Deuterocanonical books Judith 16 6 16 7 Balch 3 26 28 and Wisdom 14 6. The Brown Driver Briggs, Lexicon 1908 gives the meaning of Nephilim as giants and holds that proposed etymologies of the word are all very precarious. Five many suggested interpretations are based on the assumption that the word is a derivative of Hebrew verbal root, NPL4. Robert Baker Girdlestone 6 argued in 1871 the word comes from the Hifil causative stem, implying that the Nephilim are to be perceived as those that cause others to fall down. Ronald Hendel states that it is a passive form ones who have fallen grammatically analogous to packet one who is appointed i.e. a deputy or overseer so one who is bound i.e. a prisoner Etsy 7 8. The majority of ancient biblical translations including the Septuagint Theodosian Latin Vulgate Samaritan Targum Targum Onkelos and Targum Neophyte interpret the word to mean giants 9 Simacus translates it as the violent ones 10 11 12 and Aquila's translation has been interpreted to mean either the fallen ones 10 or the ones falling upon their enemies. In the Hebrew Bible there are three interconnected passages referencing the Nephilim. Two of them come from the Pentateuch. The first occurrence is in Genesis 6 1-4, immediately before the account of Noah's Ark. Genesis 6 4 reads as follows. Most of the contemporary English translations of Genesis 6 1 4 and Numbers 1 33 pm render the Hebrew Nephilim as giants. This tendency in turn stems from the fact that one of the earliest translations of the Hebrew Bible, the Septuagint, composed in the 3rd or 2nd century BC, renders the said word as giants. The choice made by the Greek translators has been later adopted into the Latin translation the Vulgate compiled in the 4th or 5th centuries, which uses the transcription of the Greek term rather than the literal translation of the Hebrew Nephilim. From there the tradition of the giant progeny of the sons of God and the daughters of men spread to later medieval translations of the Bible 22. The decision of the Greek translators to render the Hebrew Nephilim as Greek gigants is a separate matter. The Hebrew Nephilim means literally the fallen ones and the strict translation into Greek would be Peptocotes, which in fact appears in the Septuagint of Ezekiel 32 22-27. It seems then that the authors of Septuagint wished not only to simply translate the foreign term into Greek, but also to employ a term which would be intelligible and meaningful for their Hellenistic audiences. Given the complex meaning of the Nephilim which emerged from the three interconnected biblical passages human-divine hybrids in Genesis 6, autochthonous people in Numbers 13 and ancient warriors trapped in the underworld in Ezekiel 32, the Greek translators recognized some similarities. First and foremost, both Nephilim and Gigants were liminal beings resulting from the union of the opposite orders, and as such retained the unclear status between the human and divine. Similarly dim was their moral designation and the sources witnessed to both Ooh and fascination, with which these figures must have been looked upon. Secondly, both were presented as impersonating chaotic qualities, and posing some serious danger to gods and humans. They appeared either in the prehistoric or early historical context, but in both cases they preceded the ordering of the cosmos.
Lastly, both giants and Nephilim were clearly connected with the underworld and were said to have originated from Earth, and they both end up closed there in 22. In one Enoch, they were great giants, whose height was 300 cubits. A cubit being 18 inches 46 centimeters, this would make them 450 feet 140 meters tall. The Quran refers to the people of Ad in Quran 26 130 whom the Prophet Hud declares to be like Jabber in Hebrew, Gibberim, probably a reference to the biblical Nephilim. The people of Ad are said to be giants the tallest among them 100 feet 30 meters high 23 however, according to Islamic legend the Ad were not wiped out by the flood, since some of them had been too tall to be drowned. Instead God destroyed them after they rejected further warnings 24 after death, they were banished into the lower layers of hell. All early sources refer to the sons of heaven as angels. From the 3rd century BC onwards references are found in the Anarchic literature the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Genesis Apocryphon, the Damascus Document 4Q180 Jubilees, the Testament of Reuben II Balch Josephus and the Book of Jude compare with 2 Peter 2. For example 1 Enoch 7 2 and when the angels 3, the sons of heaven beheld them they became enamored of them saying to each other come, let us select for ourselves wives from the progeny of men and let us beget children. Some Christian apologists such as Tertullian and especially Lactantius shared this opinion. The earliest statement in a secondary commentary, explicitly interpreting this to mean that angelic beings mated with humans can be traced to the rabbinical Targum Pseudo Jonathan, and it has since become especially commonplace in modern Christian commentaries. This line of interpretation finds additional support in the text of Genesis 6 4, which juxtaposes the sons of God male gender divine nature, with the daughters of men female gender human nature. From this parallelism it could be inferred that the sons of God are understood as some superhuman beings 26. The New American Bible commentary draws a parallel to the epistle of Jude and the statement set forth in Genesis suggesting that the epistle refers implicitly to the paternity of Nephilim as heavenly beings who came to earth and had sexual intercourse with women 27 The footnotes of the Jerusalem Bible suggest that the biblical author intended the Nephilim to be an anecdote of a superhuman race 28. Some Christian commentators have argued against this view citing Jesus' statement that angels do not marry 29 others believe that Jesus was only referring to angels in heaven 30. Evidence cited in favor of the fallen angels interpretation includes the fact that the phrase the sons of God Hebrew or sons of the gods is used twice outside of Genesis chapter 6, in the book of Job 1 6 and 2 1, where the phrase explicitly references angels. The Septuagint Manuscript Codex Alexandrinus reading of Genesis 6 2 renders this phrase as the angels of God, while Codex Vaticanus reads Sons 31. Targum Pseudo Jonathan identifies the Nephilim as Shemiaza and the angels in the name list from 1 Enoch. Fallen angels were believed by Arab pagans to be sent to earth in form of men. Some of them mated with humans and gave rise to hybrid children. As recorded by Al Jahiz, a common belief held that Abu Drum, the ancestor of the Drum tribe, was actually the son of a disobedient angel and a human woman. The name and idea of Nephilim like many other religious concepts, is sometimes used in popular culture. Examples include the gothic rock band Fields of the Nephilim, the Rehnquist Quartet novels by Mick Farron, The Mortal Instruments, The Infernal Devices, The Last Hours, The Dark Artifices and other books in the Shadowhunter Chronicles series by Cassandra Clare, The Hush Hush series by Becca Fitzpatrick, the book Many Waters by Madeline Elzingel, and TV series The X-Files and Supernatural. In the video game series Darksiders the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are said to be Nephilim, wherein the Nephilim were created by the unholy union of angels and demons. 
Dante and Virgil, the main characters of the game Democ Devil May Cry 2013, a reboot of the popular original series Devil May Cry, also referred to as Nephilim, being the offspring of the demon Spada and the angel Eva. In the trading card game Magic the Gathering, the Nephilim are interpreted as old gods from before modern society 59 in Diablo 3. The Nephilim were the first humans upon sanctuary created as a result of the union between angels and demons. In the heist-themed first-person shooter Payday 2, several paintings, artifacts and far-off visuals reference the Nephilim, and a secret ending to the game brings in alien technology supposedly left by the Nephilim. A creature referred to as Nephilim appears in Season 2 of the Japanese animated series Symphogear. Nephilim is a role-playing game about powerful elemental entities reincarnating into human beings.